Good to see you, everybody. All right, we hope you had a good week. We're glad to be back home, although we had a really nice visit with my mom being in Northern California. Right, although we wouldn't mind it if the weather was just a tad warmer. Right, it's been a cold, sunny week. Uh, we still have no birthdays to celebrate. Okay, well. But we, but we have a question. Oh, from the discussion, the uh, lesson questions at the end, the students can ask us a question? Right. All right, what, so, they, what did someone ask? Somebody asked, why did they kill Jesus? Oh, well, that's a very serious but good question right and it turns out to be pretty complicated also it turns out that both the jewish leaders and the roman government were jointly responsible for killing jesus huh why didn't the jewish leaders like jesus well jesus's preaching made him very popular with all the jewish people and he had many dedicated followers the jewish leaders were afraid that people would stop listening to them and start listening to only jesus Okay, well, that's the Jewish leaders, but what about the Roman government? Well, remember, the Roman government was ruling over the Jewish people. The Roman leaders were afraid the Jewish followers... That Jesus' followers? Yes, the, that Jesus' followers would rebel against the Romans and throw them out of power, even though Jesus never talked about such a thing. Right, he never talked about overthrowing people or starting wars or anything. But it sounds like the Roman and Jewish leaders killed Jesus because they saw him like as a threat to their authority. That's right. But in the end, God showed that good conquers evil by raising Jesus from the dead on Easter morning. Hmm, wow. Well, just kind of like the Triduum that we covered before that was serious and sad, but then joyful at the end. That's right. Speaking of joyful, maybe we should bring Rover in here to uh, tell us a few jokes. Okay. Great. While you're looking for him, I'll update the class on the bean jar. Here we are. You can see that we're about halfway to the fifth line. So if you keep doing your lesson questions and discuss, posting on a discussion board, we'll probably get over that fifth line before we get to the end of the year. And Mrs. Wilmer and Rover are showing up, so I'll make room for them. All right. Well, he was in the backyard checking out the Southern California spring wildlife. I saw some morning doves, a few squirrels, and about a zillion rabbits. Yeah, we have a lot of rabbits in the yard. Spring is a time of new life. I think the rabbits enjoy all the new things growing. Did I hear that you're talking about Moses today? Right. We're talking about the Exodus, and Moses played a big part in the Exodus. Exodus? I've heard that word before, but I'm not sure what it means. Is, is it like an exit? Well, yes, but it's a very large and special exit. The Exodus is when Moses led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt and through the desert to the Promised Land. Well, that sounds like an important job. Are you ready for a couple of Moses jokes? <laughs> you actually have some jokes about Moses? All right, sure. You bet. Why was Smokey Bear angry at Moses? Smokey Bear? Why was Smokey Bear angry at Moses? Because Moses was burning bushes out in the wilderness. Oh, <laughs> oh! I remember that scene from the Ten Commandments uh, video clip we saw last November. That's pretty funny. Uh, we're going to watch another clip from the Ten Commandments later today. That sounds like fun. Here's my second Moses joke. When was medicine first mentioned in the Bible? I don't know. When was medicine first mentioned in the Bible? When God gave Moses two tablets. <laughs> oh, <laughs> tablets like medicine tablets or tablets. Well, we'll talk about what Moses' tablets look like later today. That They were two stone tablets that the Ten Commandments were written on. Now, that was pretty funny. Thanks for spending time with us. It was fun. I'll see you next week. Thanks, Rover, for getting us started on the right foot again. It's always fun to hear your jokes. Uh, but before we get into our opening prayer, we want to give you a little bit of a background on the story of the Exodus. You're going to need your Bible and your picture of the Ten Commandments tablets that was in your uh, resource packet. So pause the video if you need to to go get these things, and then you can start it up again when you get back. Okay. So the background that you need to know is that the Israelites were slaves in Egypt. And God sent Moses to convince the Egyptians to set the Israelites free. And, and that's what happened. And, but when they were leaving uh, Israel, yeah, 
when they were leaving Egypt, the Israelites had to cross the Sinai Desert to reach the Promised Land. So let's read a short story about how they knew which way to go. Here's a citation of the story we'll read. And we'll help you out with uh, finding this. EX is an abbreviation for Exodus. And Exodus is the second book in your Bible. So go find the tab for Exodus. It'll be right after Genesis. And open up your Bible at the Exodus tab. So that's the beginning of the book of Exodus. And you can see from our citation, we want to go to chapter 13. So page through your Bible until you find chapter 13. Remember the chapter numbers are in large red numbers. And they're also at the top right and top left of the pages. So chapter 13 begins on page 108. So hopefully you've all found page, uh, chapter 13. So now we're looking for verse 17. That's where we're going to start if you look at the citation. So look down through that chapter for verse 17, and that's in the left column on the next page, page 109. So right down here. So follow along as we read. This is verses 17 and 18. When the king of Egypt let the people go, God did not take them by the road that goes up the coast to Philistia, although that was the shortest way. God thought, I do not want the people to change their minds and return to Egypt when they see that they're going to have to fight. Instead, he led them a roundabout way through the desert toward the Red Sea. The Israelites were armed for battle. Now we're going to skip down to verse 21, which is in the next column. So read along with us again. For, we're going to read verses 21 and 22. During the day, the Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud to show them the way. And during the night, he went in front of them in a pillar of fire to give them light so they could travel night and day. The pillar of cloud was always in front of the people during the day and the pillar of fire at night. Wow. So when... In an, ed, in an age when there was no such thing as Google Maps, God made sure his people did not get lost in the desert. Right. He gave them something to follow, the pillars of clouds and pillars of fire. All right. So for our opening prayer, look up on page 109 at the top. There's a box that says pray it. So we're going to pray this pray it to prayer together. Okay, so we always right. start with the sign of the cross. In the name of the, the Father, Father, and the, the Son, and, and the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of light and God of darkness, the Israelites knew you were with them as they made their way out of Egypt. They saw you as a pillar of cloud in front of them during the day, and a pillar of fire at night, guiding and lighting the way. I wish I could see you sometimes. It would make life a lot easier. At least I would know that I'm heading in the right direction. I know that you're always with me too, but sometimes I don't feel it. I think that you put pillars in my life to guide me, just as you guided the Israelites. After all, I have parents, teachers, relatives, and friends who look out for me. They teach me, give me directions, and light my way when I'm lost or confused. They are gifts from you. Your way of being my very own pillar of cloud and fire. Thank you, God, for them. Amen. Amen. That was a good reminder of all the helpers each of us has in our lives. Right, and we guides are very important to us to help us stay on the right path. Right. But what happened next was the Egyptian pharaoh changed his mind about letting the Israelites go free, and he sent his soldiers after the Israelites to try to bring them back and make them be slaves again. And when they, the soldiers found the Israelites, they were camped by the Red Sea. Huh. Okay, watch this video clip from the movie The Ten Commandments to find out what happened next. Remember, Pharaoh's coming after the Israelites, trying to bring them back, and the Israelites are camped there by the Red Sea and trying to get away from Pharaoh. Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you took us away to die in the wilderness? Why we die? Fear not! Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord.
the fire of God. Gather your families and your flocks. We must go with all speed. Yes. Go where? To drown in the sea? How long will the fire hold Pharaoh back? Will it hold? After this day, you shall see his chariots no more. No! You'll be dead under them. No. The Lord of hosts will do battle for us. Behold his mighty hand. of the water, his will be done. He opens the waters before them, and he bars our way with fire. Let us go from this place. Men cannot fight against a god. Better to die in battle with a god than live in shame. Praise God and down into it! Wow, the parting of the Red Sea saved all the Israelites. They were lucky to have God on their side. You bet. For our last part of the Exodus story that we're talking about today, we're going to read excerpts from Exodus chapters 19 and 20 about the Ten Commandments. And we'd like you to follow along at home with your Ten Commandment tablets when we get to that part of the story. So now I'm going to read these. This is from Exodus chapters 19 and 20. 
on the first day of the third month after the people of Israel had left Egypt, they came to the desert of Sinai. There they set up camp at the foot of Mount Sinai. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning. A thick cloud appeared on the mountain. All of Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord had come down on it in a fire. The smoke went up like the smoke of a furnace and the people trembled with fear. The Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain. God spoke and these were his words. I am the Lord your God. You shall not have false gods before me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember to keep the Lord holy the Lord's day. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not covet your neighbor's goods. Well, now I can see why the Ten Commandments are so important. Right, since they came directly from God. You may want to cut out your Ten Commandments tablets and fold them down the middle so they'll stand up like this. You can put them on your dresser or on a table and you can see them when you pass by. Wow, that's a great, uh, great idea to remind us about the Ten Commandments. Well, we enjoyed spending time with you today. Well, thanks for watching. And your activity this week is a bingo game. Your parents will lead that and uh, see if you can get five in a row by getting question answers right. Well, that sounds like fun. And don't forget to complete your lesson questions and to post on the discussion board. Yeah, I can't wait to hear to learn about everybody's superpower. Yeah, me too. And we'll see you next week for a lesson on parables. Parables? Oh, good. Parables are really... I, I like them because they're stories. But they are also stories that teach us something. That's right. And then this week's question was, what is the Exodus? And now we know that the Exodus was Moses leading the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt and through the desert to the promised land. Moses with a lot of help from God. Well, that's true. God was a big help, parting the Red Sea and giving them the Ten Commandments. And what about those pillars to show them the way to go so they don't get lost in the desert? Absolutely, yes. So, we'll see you next week. All right, have a good week. And, and God, God bless, bless you. you.